Good evening, guys. I'm Marshall here, and today I'm going to keep building on what I've been talking about over the week about worth, love, and attachment. And today, specifically, is about a concept called love addiction, or in technical terms, trauma bonding. Now, when you deal with codependency, we're actually facing this at some level because codependency is a result of unmatured attachment. We're looking for identity love and value through another person and that's you know if you're a child that's a very natural thing to do because we're identifying with the parent or the bonded source in some way to know ourselves to know the world but as an adult that puts us in a rather tricky position because we're we're going to be used by somebody typically a toxic person for supply while we're trying to get love and identity through them and that lack of self-awareness about who we are, about what our value is, about our personage, allows them to shape us into a particular way, whatever way it is that works for them, dominantly. Now, what happens in this process is this thing called intermittent validation or intermittent reinforcement. They're the same things, slightly different words. And what that does is in the, in the narcissistic dynamic, you have this thing called love bombing. It's the first phase they put you through. And this starts to validate deeply what we've always wanted to know and always wanted to feel about who we are. It's like, I'm lovable. I'm valuable. I matter. They see me. They care about me. They want me. They like me. They need me. And this triggers an, an enormous amount of serotonin, dopamine, and um, cortisol in the system that binds together and causes us to feel hooked on the person. It's the same kind of experience we have when we're, you know, got a crush or falling in love with someone that's reciprocating that kind of interest. The problem here, though, the difference between a healthy person in that phase and this one is that the codependent is now beginning to attach their identity and their value to that person because they're aborted, it's called aborted attachment injury. The attachment is activated and it's like, I can finally find myself here through this person. Essentially, the person that the codependent is attaching to is being put into a position of a parent, like a surrogate for the parent they did not get in the past. And that puts their brain into this cycle of being manipulated, shaped, and abused because the other person's toxic. If a healthy person ran into a codependent and that codependent started to attach to them that way, they'd have an immediate sense of being smothered. They'd be like, whoa, you need to know yourself. You need to choose your boundaries. And they would literally push them away. they say, nope, you got to go get some help because they understand and respect the necessity of individuality. Well, the love addiction in this big hit of, of chemical hit, this big chemical hit, gets them hooked chemically on that person. They have now partially imprinted on that individual. And then what happens in the narcissistic cycle, they do the love bomb or the idealization phase, and then they go through this devaluation where they start criticizing and attacking the codependent trying to shape them in certain ways or, or discard them in certain ways. What this does to the codependent's mind is it triggers an enormous amount of fear of withdrawal or losing this attachment or this identity with the person. So now they get a big hit of anxiety, cortisol, fear, and adrenaline. And so they move into their codependent pattern trying to fix and please and control the other person. And then the narcissist gets sick of it and discards them which is the biggest fear of the codependent is being abandoned because an abandonment for a codependent is a loss of self, a loss of identity. They don't have a governing sense of themselves anymore when that person gets rid of them, discards them. And then the cycle starts again. And this is where intermittent validation or reinforcement comes in because the narcissist comes in and hoovers them with a gift or some little attention. Or like a text, like, how are you doing today? I was thinking about you and how special you are. And then, boom, that chemical hit comes again. And the, nar and the codependent becomes more and more attached to the validation of the narcissist so they can get that hit. And they confuse that hit with love. 
and with approval, with value. And that's not what's going on. The narcissist is programming the codependent on how to serve them and then proving to the codependent, I don't need you, so you're going to have to live with it. I control you. And then the narcissist or the codependent so lost without themselves that they're just like, yeah, I'm going to keep going back because I want that hit. I want that love. I want that validation. And there's this, this is where the codependent fantasy comes in. So I know if this is a little combobulated because there's a lot of factors going on. But the codependency uh, fantasy says that this person can be this way if I try hard enough. Does that make any sense? When we really think about it, it's like, oh, if I try hard enough to please them, they'll become the person I think they should be, that I know that they really are. They're just a hurt person. They just have pain. They just need a chance. They just need understanding. This is enabler talk, right? We're in there fixing it. We're in there pleasing them. And the brain, the codependent brain is like, oh, we might get a hit. And then they do. They, they appear to succeed in their effort, which is another reinforcement to this false idea that they can shape the narcissist into what they want, where all along the narcissist is like, oh, you need a little breadcrumb, dunk. And then they're like, oh, okay. And then the narcissist can shape them a little more by devaluing and discarding them. Because remember, it's like clay or even better, wood. So the narcissist sees this unformed piece of wood and the wood's like shape me shape me so he gets in there and he's like i really like you wood you're great i love you just the way you are you're the most impressive piece of wood i've ever known dear god thank you yeah i've never felt this way before so now the wood's like yay i've been accepted and then he takes out a knife and he shaves off a little bit that would be devaluing cuts off a major part of it gets a little frustrated in there because there's a knot in that wood and so he's like oh don't want to deal with it now discards it but then now he needs his supply. He needs his validation and his attention. He needs to be important. And I use that tone deliberately because I have no respect for narcissists. So he's a broken boy and he needs attention. No, he doesn't. But what he does is he knows that he can shape that wood. So he comes in and loves, bombs it again, takes it back and carves a little more off, tries to work out that knot again. That knot, which is the individuality that exists in all of us, he can't get it out. So he discards again, hoping the codependent will give themselves up a little more. That's, that's really the cycle going on. And inside of that for the codependent is this love addiction. It's trauma bonding. Literally, the brain literally does this. It says, you know, they caused me pain, but I felt so much love for them because of how they've treated me. It makes no sense because it isn't rational. It's chemically bound in the brain. The brain is not functioning correctly and it is not seeing what's happening effectively. So how do we get out of love addiction? This is a difficult process and it is a chemical withdrawal at some point where we start to realize that the pain we've been enduring matters more than the benefit we're getting. And when we can start doing that, we're actually beginning to self-identify and realize that our attachment injury is in a lot of pain. And then we can start to heal it. Attachment is healed through maturity and not through the, the I would say, standard concept of healing. Like, we got to fix it. You know, we gotta got to ease the pain. Attachment is healed by maturing the attachment out of anxiety or out of avoidance and into stable bond within the self. So we restore identity back to us. So that's, that's what the love addiction course that I'm going to be starting next Tuesday is all about to get access to that or to, you know, participate in the course and go through that. You need to join the codependence to confidence membership. And the link is up in the description there. Also tomorrow we have our narcissist workshop, it's free. It's one of the clarity workshops I do. So join, learn about the narcissist, learn about what they're really looking for, how to see them, you know, how, how to detect them, and then how to deal with them so that you're not getting drawn into their web, especially if you have codependency in your past. That workshop will be very, very valuable for you. Uh, to heal code, but ultimately to kind of wrap this up, 
Love addiction is healed by maturing the internal attachment back to ourselves, becoming who we are, replacing what I call the governing value, which is the reference point we use for ourselves, from shame to love, and then going in and discovering more about who we are as an individual, sharing that with the world, and building healthy, loving relationships. Hi, Jackie. Oh, thank you for letting me know I was doing a good job because it's a little combobulated. But uh, that's it. I will be back tomorrow with some Q&A from my group. If you want support in recovering and thriving beyond codependency, join my tribe. The link is up in the description. We'd be glad to have you. It's free. We do quite a bit of things in there. I think you, you'll find a lot of value and a lot of people have changed their lives by just being a part of that group. So thank you again for showing up. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. You guys have a good night.